40. If you don't mind, if you can remain standing, if not, it's totally fine. We're going to look tonight at accurate projectiles, accurate projectiles. You'll see where we're going. It has to do with prayer tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40. Many people don't know 1 Samuel 17 is one of the most popular chapters in Holy Scripture because it is the narrative of David and Goliath. And it is one of the longest narratives in all of Scripture, some 58 verses. And here you see the reigning king, in at least a certain sense, passing the mantle to the future king, even if he didn't want to. It was a God thing. 1 Samuel 17, verse number 40, we're going to look at the weaponry that David had first at this epic confrontation. How many of you know we're fighting some Goliaths in this world? Amen. We're fighting some giants, but I'm glad that God is the creator. You know, it's like our big brother, our daddy can beat up anybody. Hallelujah. I'm glad. 1 Samuel 17 and 40. And so David, the shepherd boy, he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones. If you don't mind, let's everybody say five smooth stones. Five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. So let's see what he had. He had a staff. He had five smooth stones from a brook. He had a shepherd's bag and a sling. This is what he had. He's fighting a giant that at minimum is nine foot six. They have found his name in archaeology, one of the fascinating finds of archaeology in the area of Gath, further proving the validity of Holy Scripture. 1 Samuel 17, verse 4. This is who he is fighting. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines. A champion means he has been in battle before and he is un- defeated. How many of you know God can even defeat the undefeated? Amen. Named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. Again, minimum that's nine foot six. Very well could be a little bigger than that. He would make Shaquille O'Neal look like a midget. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. That's a very important point. And he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, hundreds of pounds, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, or as we would call it, a telephone pole. A weaver's beam or a telephone pole or a railroad tie. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a shield went before him. So he had all kinds of weaponry and he had somebody else that went before him. And then we're going to look at the results. Verse 47, we'll read it quickly and then you can be seated. Verse 47, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword or spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. David speaking came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. And David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took dense a stone and slain it and smote the Philistine in the forehead. That the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion, the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they Fled. We're going to talk about accurate projectiles tonight. I wonder if we could pray, ask God to do everything he wants to do with this very short Bible lesson tonight. Let's pray together. God, I glorify you. I love you. I'm so thankful for your wonderful people that have come out to hear the word of God and to pray to join our hearts together in prayer and purpose. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and dividing the sun of soul and spirit, bone of marrow, discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Nothing is hid from the eyes of you with whom we have to do. 
God, I'm asking you to let the sword of the Spirit go into our hearts and our lives this evening. God, strengthen us in the power of the Holy Ghost. God, do miracles. Let us be strong in you, the power of your mind, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Why don't we once again say in Jesus' name and just give glory to the Lord a little bit. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. We worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Why don't you turn to somebody if you're close to them and say, God is good. God is good. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. The very name David means beloved. Goliath means to uncover or to reveal. In verse 45, we find a secret of David's success. He said this, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear, with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. So David knew this was a spiritual battle, and he was going with a spiritual name, the name of Jehovah, the name of Almighty God. I find it fascinating that he went out with the name, he went out with a stone, and he went out with a sword. Now, we all know about the name of God in this dispensation. It's Jesus, right? The name of Jesus. Why don't we all say Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. And the sword, we know, is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This wonderful typology of Holy Scripture. So you have the name of Jesus, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What would the stone represent? Well, obviously it represents something that is able to be projected. It's something that is able to leave us and go towards something else. And so that most closely attenuates in the Christian life and typology of prayer. It's something that we can do, but it affects others. We don't just pray for ourselves, but we pray for the world around us. It could be because of a lack of fervent, effectual prayer that certain things have crept in on the United States of America. I don't want to throw stones at the American church, but it very well could be that if Dr. Jesus was diagnosed the malady of the United States of America, he would say, well, maybe you're a little prayer deficient. But I'm thankful that God is able to start us where we are today. Take no thought for tomorrow. For sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Six Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 2 says. So we're able to start right now. Today is the beginning of the rest of our lives. We can pray better than we've ever prayed today. God allows us the gift of every moment to make U-turns or right turns or better turns for Him. So our past we are enslaved so often through our guilt or by Satan's accusations and fiery darts. We're paralyzed by the future because we don't know the future, but we do know who holds the future, Jesus Christ. But what God has given you and I is today. And we can make commitments in the Holy Ghost to let our today be great and through the help of the Holy Ghost, the rest of our life to be greater than it's ever been. A guy like Moses did more after he was 80 than he ever did before he was 80. So it shows us it's never too late to start and to say, God, I want to be great. It doesn't matter. You say, well, I've already done great things for God. There is a law of the double portion. You can do even greater things for God. So God is calling us to that. The word David means beloved. Goliath, as I've mentioned, means to uncover or reveal if rock would here at least in one sense, in one part of typology, represent prayer, just like the name of Jesus and the sword of the Spirit which would represent the Word of God. If it would represent prayer, notice that rock was for one enemy. It was for one projectile very accurately used for one enemy. So this nearly 10 foot person and maybe 10 feet tall person with a helmet of brass on with a person walking before him has a shepherd boy that's got one focus in mind. It's not the person walking in front of Goliath. It's Goliath himself. And he said, you come against me with a sword and a spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. 
And so he took that one rock, the smooth stone out of the brook, and threw it right at Goliath's forehead. Goliath had been making fun. He had been laughing. I'm going to tell you the world, the, some in the community laugh at the apostolic church. You believe you can change the world through praying. You believe that you can change the world through speaking with tongues. You think you can change the world by preaching that 2,000-year-old book. I'm going to tell you, they might be laughing, but when the rock of God's deliverance starts heading towards them, they're not going to be laughing anymore. Because, man, that is the way, the truth, and the life. That is what this world needs is the power of the Holy Ghost, the name of Jesus. Now it is more incumbent than ever before that we be people of the name, people of the word, people of the book, and people of the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And people of prayer. So he had an accurate projectile. He was focused on one enemy. And so David had one person. He had a very small window and he knew I've got to get this rock in that window. But you see, he knew how to sling that stone when the giant came because he had been practicing for that day. Friend, when a giant comes into your life, if you've got a consistent prayer life, a day-by-day -day prayer life, you already know what to do when Goliath stands in front of you. You sling the stone of prayer to him. You ask God to move that Goliath. You ask God to get that Goliath out of your life. See, David had been practicing daily for that very moment. It was the God-appointed time. Your prayer life, you might think sometimes it may get a little boring, but it shouldn't. You might think that it gets a little redundant, but it shouldn't because you're changing the world. But I'm going to tell you, when Goliath stands in front of you, you know what to throw Goliath's way. And God's going to use your expertness in prayer to remove the Goliath from your life. Maybe from your community, maybe from your state. Maybe even from our country, maybe even from our world, because with God, nothing is impossible. Can you say amen? amen? So Goliath is confronting us today. We've got to go in the name of Jesus. We've got to pray. And when the Goliath comes down, we've got to cut off the Goliath's head with the word of God so we can rebuild in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about some accurate projectiles tonight which represent prayer. How many of you want to pray in the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 20, verse number 16. We read about another tribe with some accurate projectiles. And we're going to tell you, like I said, this is going to be extremely short. I just felt it in the Holy Ghost to share it with somebody tonight. Judges 20, 16 says, Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men, left-handed. Every one could sling stones in a hair breath and not miss. I won't ask tonight how many of you are left-handed. Statistics show about 12 to 14 percent of people are left-handed. Now, in the Bible times, why people overwhelmingly were left-handed was because of defeat in warfare. That when you lost a battle, the uh, conquering army would take the right hand of the men and even the male children and cut off their right hand. Now, it could be it was just a genetic thing of the tribe of Benjamin that they were left-handed. But it could be that they had to learn to do everything left-handed because they did not have a right hand because they had lost it in a battle somewhere. So with that thought in mind, let's read verse 16 again. It says, among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. See, they didn't have a right hand, but they still had a left hand. I'm going to tell you, the devil may have stolen your marriage from you. He may have stolen a child from you. He may have stolen a relationship from you. He may have stolen something in your youth from you. Satan may have stolen time from you. He may have stolen your childhood from you. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll live for God, you can still be a mighty warrior for God. 
You've got to quit looking at what the devil took from you and look what God has given to you that you can still defeat the enemy. Hey, I know God is raising up a bunch of left-handed warriors in this end time hour. They don't have it all together. They weren't raised Pentecostal. They didn't speak with tongues. They weren't raised on a church pew. But God is still saying, it doesn't matter. You just go out there and you defeat the enemy. And you'll notice everyone can sling a stone in a hair's breadth and not mince because you know what the devil does. You know how bad Satan is. You know how evil Satan is. We were just reading a news article about how certain political party that, that witches are casting spells against people and witches and warlocks are doing all kinds of stuff and that they've been accepted into the mainstream and they're injecting themselves into politics and they're injecting themselves asking for Satan to put maximum destruction in the riots and in the chaos and at maximum destroying in all of that. But I'm going to tell you, there's some left-handed warriors that you've come through a battle and God still got his hand on you. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. And you're like, I'm going to throw that rock right at the enemy's head. I'm going to throw that rock and I'm not going to miss in the name of Jesus. You come against me with the meat. You come against me with spells. You come against me with all this stuff. But I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. If you want to be a part of this end time Holy Ghost filled apostolic army, why don't you stand to your feet and say, God, here am I. Send me. I want to turn up the heat in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We've seen revival in Muslim nations. We've seen revival in Hindu nations. We've seen revival in Buddhist nations. We've seen revival in secular nations. God's going to give a revival in this nation. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let this apostolic church have some accurate projectiles. Some accurate praying. Hallelujah. We're not going to be praying for a big house in the woods and a new car in the driveway and gold everywhere. But God, we're going to be praying against the devil, against the works of the enemy, against the one that has this world bound. Because whom the Son is made free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We're going to be praying. We're going to be fasting. We've got some accurate projectiles in Jesus' name. We're not perfect. We're, we're the youngest like David, a red-headed 16-year-old warrior fighting a champion. But we're going to bring that spiritual trophy home. We're a left-handed warrior, but you're going to use us to do great things. Why don't you why don't you pray for the person next to you? If it's not a family member, pray for them with social distance. But still pray because that rock of God's deliverance can get to them. Some accurate prayers. God, in Jesus' name, do miracles in every life. Do miracles in every heart. Do miracles, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Let apostolic revival minister in every soul, in every heart. God, don't let anybody leave here, God, without apostolic revival. God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, raise up some strong people. God, we may be left-handed. We may be 16 years old. We may not fit the profile. But God, we've got you. And you and, and us make a majority. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why don't we just give glory to the name of Jesus once again. Glory to the name of Jesus. Let us pray. God, some accurate projectiles at the enemy of this world. Glory to the name of Jesus. Church, I just want to encourage you. Live for God. Do everything you can for Jesus. Pray. Help people. And let's see God do great things. This is going to be the greatest time of revival that the world has ever seen. I believe God can do greater things than he has ever done. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's pray together in this missile tonight. God, in Jesus' name, let apostolic revival be in every heart, Jesus, in every life, God. 
In Jesus' name, let us open the doors of our heart, God. You will not push them open. You stand in the door or not. You want us to open. God, you're a perfect gentleman. Let all of us open the doors to our heart, Lord Jesus Christ, to see mighty things, to see great things. We praise you, God, in Jesus' mighty name. God, we're just going to keep praying. Ask it. Seek it. Knock it. We're going to keep praying. We're going to pick up five spoon stones. If the first one didn't kill the enemy, we'll pick up another one. Hallelujah. If there's more than 700 against us, we'll just pick up some more rocks. Hallelujah. We'll pray some more prayers till you come again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't we just glorify the Lord again. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Glory to the name of 